Hi guys, welcome to our flow code for PIC for Absolute Beginner series. This is tutorial 21. In this tutorial, we're gonna learn how to use interrupt in flow code. Interrupt are one of the most powerful features of PIC microcontrollers. Interrupt make it possible to create applications that can respond to external stimulus in real time. An interrupt is basically an event that requires the microcontroller to stop whatever it's doing and then jump to execute a program code related to that event that caused the interrupt. An interrupt requires immediate attention. Only once the microcontroller will finish executing the interrupt code, then it can go back to continue with the main program. The interrupt code is called the interrupt service routine or interrupt handler. Guys, here is a simple example to understand interrupt. Let's say you are playing a game with your phone and suddenly somebody is calling you. Your phone starts ringing. Your phone will immediately leave the game and start ringing. Only once you are done with the call, then the phone will jump back to the game. This process is similar to the interrupt service routine execution. You can think the main program routine, in this case, as playing the game and ringing of the mobile phone as causing an interrupt. This initiates your mobile phone conversation, which is similar to executing the interrupt service routine. Guys, if there were no interrupt while playing the game, the microcontroller will time to time pause the game and monitor if someone is trying to call you. As you can see, this is not efficient way of programming as it consumes all its processing time for monitoring and there can be a possibility of missing a short process that can require immediate attention. The best way is to leave the microcontroller do its normal main program and if there is nothing to do, let the microcontroller go into sleep mode and be awakened only to respond to an interrupt that occurs. This can save power, especially if the application is battery powered. The process of continuous monitoring is known as polling. Interrupt can be very useful in many applications, such as in fail-safe applications. For example, in an emergency such as a power failure, in a hazardous environment where a microcontroller has to take some precise coordinated actions like switching off the system immediately in an orderly manner in such applications an external interrupt can force the microcontroller to stop whatever is doing and take immediate attention interrupt can be also very useful in performing routine tasks if an application requires the microcontroller to perform routine tasks at precise times such as blinking a status led reading input of sensors connected to the microcontroller exactly every few milliseconds, a timer interrupt scheduled with the required timing can divert the microcontroller from normal program execution to accomplish the task at the precise time required. Interrupt can also be used to check if certain tasks have been completed. Some applications may need to know when a task such as an analog to digital conversion is completed, instead of polling for incoming data from a NUSART or USB port, for example, an interrupt could be raised immediately when the analog to digital conversion is done or when there is an incoming data instead of keeping the microcontroller doing nothing but waiting for this to happen. Different peak microcontrollers have different interrupts but most have both the core and peripheral interrupt sources. Always check your device data sheet to find out more about the interrupt. Most of PIC 18F series PIC microcontrollers have the following interrupt. The external interrupt, which is external edge triggered interrupt on pin RB0, RB1 and RB2. This interrupt is normally called INT0, INT1 and INT2. We've got interrupt on port B pin changes. If any one of pin RB4 to RB7 pins changes status, this can raise an interrupt. Timer 0 overflow interrupt. Timer 1 overflow interrupt. 
Tema 2, Tema 3, Overflow Interrupt, Parallel Slave Port Read Write Interrupt, ADC Convention Completed Interrupt, The USART Received Interrupt, USART Transmit Interrupt, Synchronous Serial Port Interrupt, CCP1 Interrupt, CCP2 Interrupt, Comparator Interrupt, EEPROM Flash Write Interrupt, Bus Collision Interrupt, and Low Voltage Detect Interrupt. We're gonna create a simple example to demonstrate how to use interrupts in flow code. Let us start a new project in flow code to write our code. With flow code, it's super easy to use interrupt. We're gonna use the PIC 18F45K22. The first thing we're gonna configure our oscillator and configuration bit. We're gonna use 8 MHz crystal oscillator. It's gonna be an external oscillator. There are some few bits we're gonna set. We're gonna use an oscillator medium power 4 to, 4 to 16 megahertz. We're gonna disable the PLL. We're not gonna use the phase lock loop. We're gonna disable the watchdog timer. We're gonna also disable the extended extraction set. Okay, so in this example, we're gonna have two LEDs. We're gonna have a green LED connected to RB4 and a red LED connected to RB5. We're gonna use the normal LEDs. Try to zoom in. Gonna need another one. We're gonna need a push button. Okay. We're gonna rename this screen LED and we're gonna connect it to port RB4. The next one, we're gonna name it red LED we're gonna connect it to port B bit 5 and the color we're gonna set it to red okay our push button we're gonna name it sensor and we're gonna connect it to port B0, which is gonna be interrupt int 0. 
this is gonna be our main code we're gonna blink the green LED on and off at an interval of one second so the green LED we're gonna turn it on then after a delay of one second we're gonna turn it off again green LED turn off then another delay of one second if I run my simulation you can see my green LED it's blinking at the interval of one second okay stop then the next thing we're gonna insert the interrupt icon double click the first thing is to enable the interrupt then we can choose the interrupt that we're gonna use the number and types of interrupt available are dependent on the peak used so some devices have a number of interrupt whereas others may have just a few with this peak we've got timer 0, timer 1, timer 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6 interrupt we've got external interrupt in 0, in 1, in 2 we've got the USAR to receive interrupt we've got the interrupt on change on port P and you can even customize your own interrupt each interrupt has got its own properties for example the time you can configure the clock source you can configure the source edge select and you can also configure the prescaler rate the external interrupt you can only configure the interrupt edge select whether it's gonna be on rising edge or on falling edge the interrupt on change react to level change on any of RB4 to RB5 pins if a pin change status from low to high or from high to low you can select which pins you're gonna use if you want to use a pin you can just deselect it and the USART receive interrupt there is nothing that you can configure in the properties so in our example we're gonna use the external interrupt in zero when an interrupt is activated execute a macro this will be the interrupt service routine code you can use an existing macro or you can create a new one in this case we're just gonna create a new one because we don't have an existing macro so click on new macro we're gonna name this interrupt code click OK then click OK if you want to close this interrupt properties or you can click on OK and edit so that you can edit the macro that we have just created as you have said in this macro we're just gonna blink fast the red LED at an interval of 200 millisecond so we're gonna need a loop we're gonna loop five times then exit this loop okay red LED we're gonna turn it on then we're gonna need a delay of 200 milliseconds then we're gonna switch off our red LED turn off then we're gonna need another 500 another 200 millisecond and that's all guys we've got basically two code this is gonna be our main code and when our interrupt is activated it's gonna jump to execute this interrupt code and after this interrupt code is executed then it's gonna jump back to the main code let us simulate our code you can see the green LED is blinking at an interval of one one second so if I press my push button 
can see it's gonna blink five times then it's gonna jump back to the main code click again five times and so on and that's all guys it's really super easy to use interrupt with flow code the same procedures can also be used if you want to use the other interrupt let's say on port rb1 this int1 or int2 it's gonna be basically the same process or even also if you want to use the interrupt on change on port b you can also use the same process it's really super easy let us compile our code we're gonna compile it to hex uh, save yes we're gonna save our project folder external interrupt you're gonna name it interrupt click save it's compiling finish no errors were found let us run our Proteus simulation Thank you guys for watching this tutorial. In the next tutorial, we're gonna learn how to use the timer interrupt. If you find this tutorial helpful, please like it, leave a comment, and don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel to be notified when we upload the next video. Thank you.